I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Chair. I would like to exercise the right of reply in connection with the statement made yesterday by the U.S. delegation. Yesterday, we heard a rather eloquent statement from the U.S. delegation. It is quite telling in terms of understanding the approaches of the United States to ensuring international security and the consideration of the most pressing issues in the area of arms control, disarmament, and nonproliferation. We get the impression that the United States are the only country in the world concerned with the state of affairs in this key area for international security. We get the impression that is somehow the, only, the United States is the only country making efforts to build a new arms control and nonproliferation system. Today, in the statement of the Russian Federation, we demonstrated through facts that this is not in line with reality. In addition to what we have said earlier, we can only add that the United States for decades have been unfailingly stepping up their strategic offensive capacity and capability and have been developing an infrastructure to project military force into any point around the world, have been increasing their military budget, which has now reached astronomical figures, have been forcing their allies to step up their military expenditures, have been constantly modernizing and upgrading their armed forces, perfecting their military application. They are developing new forms and methods of warfare and tailoring their doctrine documents to this. It is no secret that the U.S. has long divided up the globe into segments, defining for each of them a military command that is responsible for it. There is no region left in the world where military bases would not be deployed in addition to powerful military groups of the U.S., military presence of the U.S., that is capable in mere hours of invading any country or wiping it off the face of the earth. The U.S. has long been looking at the world through the prism of a military rifle sight, keeping all countries without exception in a constant, unweakening state of tension. We were surprised not only by the tone of the U.S. representative, but also by his key message. In the new interpretation presented, we have forgot we have heard long forgotten themes and motives regarding putting up dividing lines. That would seem to be the cherry on top of the cake that the U.S. had been saving for the first committee. Such statements not only take us back to the era of the Cold War, but contravene the positions being put forth by Washington 
in terms of considering issues of armed control disarmament and nonproliferation, on the one hand, the U.S. is expressing preparedness for dialogue with Russia and other countries and are expressing an intention to carry out that dialogue in a constructive manner. Yet, on the other hand, they are themselves completely closing down such a possibility and throwing unfounded, unsubstantiated, and sometimes absurd accusations against us using rhetoric that goes beyond not only diplomatic discourse, but completely running counter to the spirit of intergovernmental relations based on the UN Charter and international law. There were some positive moments in the US delegation statement as well. One of them was a reference to the close link between disarmament and democracy. We would like to ask our US counterparts the question, how should we all see and consider the United States who have declared the placement of weapons in outer space who have launched programs to build up their missile capabilities, nuclear missile capabilities, who are undertaking destructive steps to dismantle the existing system of international disarmament uh, agreements and treaties, and thus jeopardizing the foundations of international security. How do we interpret all this in terms of its linkage to democracy? If we follow the logic presented to us yesterday by the representative of the State Department, then regrettably we cannot consider the United States a fully fledged democracy. And given the historical experience that we've had in the last few decades and the events that took place in a number of countries initiated by and with the direct participation of the United States, the very democratic nature itself can be put under doubt when it comes to political power in the U.S. Thank you very much for your attention. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation.